Aloha everybody. Good afternoon on this beautiful uh, Aloha Friday. I hope everybody will have a beautiful weekend um, and you know safe weekend and get to the election <laughs> elections this Saturday and vote 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 so don't be afraid of voting um, so we just doing a short live of, of what's what has transpired we're with just, the we're, we're talking, we're guys talk about voting yeah hey guys hey yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about voting yes yeah? so like the, the way it works with voting you guys get a chance every year or every two years or every four years that's when you get a chance to actually say what you want right right this is like your one chance to say what you feel like how you want things to go for the next four years whatever you think you think whatever you want but now right. is your only chance to make an impact and place right, it, right? right? We talked about, people were talking about, you know, one thing that's been coming up with us is people talk about accountability for us. Like, oh, you guys have no accountability. Well, no, anyone, anyone of you guys watching can come out and call us out, yeah? And right. like, you know, we can, you know, we can basically can stop us doing what we're doing. Yeah. But some elected, elected official, you get a chance once every election to do that, right? right. In between, you, there's not much you can do. So however you guys feel about what's happened, now is your chance to, to to give your input. Yeah, that's right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> go ahead and vote. So whatever, whoever it's for, like voting is super important. Right. And Even if uh, you never had before, it's never too late to start. I'll be voting tomorrow. So you'll be voting. Did you vote yet? I haven't voted yet. No. But You're gonna vote I, tomorrow. I have my my my. Uh, I do my mine by uh, my by uh, mail in. Actually, I have it. I carry it in tomorrow. I believe. Right on. Yeah. Right on. So with that, <laughs> with that being said, sorry, low network connection. But um, let me see if I can get a good signal. Usually I get a good signal here. Oh, we're back on. But um, also another thing that we want to recognize, it's Philip's birthday. Hey, thank you. <laughs> birthday, Phil. Thank you. And he I is 31 it. years old today. Appreciate everybody's birthday wishes. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate right. it. And um, so, <clears throat> lava. Let's go to the lava update. Um, lava is still flowing into the ocean at the Ahalanui and Pohiki area. Um, still a vast amount of lava entering the ocean. Um, still the draining of the tube system. There's still there's still lava in Fisher Eight. It's a pond, but it's it's slowly decreasing. So it's slowly receding from the, the, the top of the cone, um, but there's still lava entering the, uh, the ocean. And also there's some breakouts here and there on the, the braided channel area. So um, small breakouts, but you know, that's part of the draining of the system. Um, as far as yesterday, there were people reporting that the plates were, were um, you know getting jeopardized with shifting shifting it could have been because of the earthquakes but my my suspicion was uh it could have been because of um just so much rain also, that was coming down and it kind of makes it look a little bit more you know dramatic going over the uh the plates so i don't know if it was false um false information so what I what we did we, we we ended up going up there ourselves and try to find out what was really going on. So one thing that I got back was there was a glitch on the cameras because there was so much rain and all that kind of stuff. It read it read the plates wrong. It read uh, 220, but it wasn't. It was still 130, 130 degrees um, yesterday, and there was no shifting of any plates or anything like that. So. Um, but there, there, there was a lot of reports of, um, um, you know, movement of the plates or something was happening with the plates. So, um, yeah, nothing happened there. Um, yeah, we, we do know that the, that there have been cracks moving. You know, I got plenty of pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cracks moving, widening, shifting. Some of them getting bigger, or part one side dropping down yeah. or up. So, the ground is moving around there. We know that, and it's possible there was a little shift. But whatever during, it was during the earthquake, during the earthquake, during the earthquake possibly, possibly before the earthquake, even yeah. you know. But like whatever it was, it didn't really. I know I have a, affect it that much. I know I, uh, there's a there's a lady Tanya lives in um, Malama Street on the um, upper near Miley and Malama Street, uh -huh. and she's been saying that uh, um, there's some cracks near her house that is 
expanding, getting bigger expanding, and deeper. Yeah, and, and they're seeing more gas coming out. Yeah, too. and she's she sent me the picture, and and what we we like to say about that is just it's it's the because there's not that much lava in the system anymore. Um, it's starting to shift and yeah, starting it's to like settle. Settling, yeah, settling. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. settling. So it's all dropping down. So that's that's expected. I know it's scary right. to see cracks moving and gas coming out more, but it's all happening because the lava is leaving. Right. Right. So, and we're gonna see a lot of a lot of um, gases um, being disposed by this this lava because you know the 1955 flow, even from in the, in the early 2000s, 2000. 2000 you know 2001 2002 um, 1999 we still been able seeing steam and a lot of gases coming out of the uh, the steam, steam vents right there so yeah. we're gonna see this happen for a you know long periods of yeah. time there's kind of two phases there's a phase of like the stinkiest gas which is like the stuff coming out of the magma itself that probably goes off burns off after probably some months and then you get the second the second stage is the, the steam itself right and right. when the water goes through the all the magma and all the hot rocks it gets sulfur also then you get that kind of sulfur smelling steam that if anyone who went to the steam vents knew what, what that yeah. what that was like. It was not quite as it's not really foggy, but you could still smell the sulfur, yeah, even yeah. though it was mostly steam, that kind of style style, yeah. So that's what's happening up there. Um, again, lava is still flowing into the ocean. It has um, kind of almost slowed down near Pohiki. So Pohiki pretty much, you know, it, there's a chance that Pohiki will not be covered. I'm I I'm very very positive in myself that I think Poiki is safe so that's a good thing um, but you know we're gonna go over some of the the, the, the recent events here see if we can get a spot with no glare okay let's see yeah. alright guys so there's a, a new thermal map let's see what that glare situation is on. it's not that great no, let's do it with that alright new thermal map and this is kind of a little different scale than the last ones. They only they only scanned kind of the area down uh, west and south at Kapoho, from Kapoho Pu Kapoho down to Pohuiki, and then a little bit around Fisher Eight. And you guys can see there's not a whole lot of heat on the surface. You might be see, can see a little bit of these traces, a little bit of kind of grayish wisp through there. There's a little bit of hot flow still in there, but really the only active lava is on the surface is down here at the edge. And that's where the that's where the, the ocean entry is pretty much. Uh very much active and right. this was from what day this yesterday? one is from yesterday 6 a.m. Right yeah so you actually can still see in this in this picture there's still a little bit of hot lava here on the edge that's that flow that was uh, moving um, near, nearest to the boat ramp still yeah. over there and you guys can kind of see even though there's a lot of lava draining out at the front there's not a whole bunch on top feeding it there's probably still so many inside you can't see through here but that's kind of where it's going there's one patch way over here which you guys were reporting even last week and then by the fissure itself, uh, you see that actual lava pond is down here in the middle. And everything else, is the shape of it, has it kind of drained out. Um, so there's still some hot spots in there, but basically the lava is only down to the very bottom. And, you know, a couple of spots in the channel, like I was saying, that don't actually appear in this scan right here. So that's basically the same story as we've been telling you guys. The lava is actually still there and bubbling up uh, deep in that pit and then just kind of sinking back in underground. It's basically, basically burping itself at this point, letting out gas and just circulating within there, not coming out, and you know, that's all good for now. So um, that's the story with the thermal. Uh, for earthquakes, uh, there's not a huge amount of earthquakes, but there are some, you know, here's the earthquakes over the last uh, 24 hours, right in there. It looks like the biggest one might have been a, a 2.4 down over here, and the next biggest one is a 2.0. So the largest one of those 2.0, so those are all kind of small. So um, not much not much to talk about there. A couple of the random one up by the saddle but not worth talking about either and then the big uh, important signal we're looking at is our tilt all right so here's our tilt for the last two days and here's our earthquake we had yesterday where everything kind of changed from that point on right because it was kind of going up and it might have been go kind of seemed like it was going to peak and go down and once this happened it kind of shocked it and just kept it going up but actually it is leveling off now and we're going to see if it's actually going down a little bit here at the far end so that's a uh, within a range of what's been happening, you know, wiggling up and down a little bit, maybe from that little trickle of lava going through still, it's hard to really say, say exactly what's going on in there. But the amount of, amount of wiggle isn't very much, you guys can see the scale is like 1.5 to a minus 1.5 right there. Right, not like before. So, um, the pool view, we talked about there's the earthquake yesterday, and then the deflation signal right through here is going to be really hard to tell what's going on because this is what was really raining, right? And the pool tilt meter gets a lot more rain than a Halemaumau one, so usually we see like the rain bump 
on these plots and not so much on this one up here. But um, so it's hard to tell exactly what was happening besides the rain. You know, it's possible what we saw before was that when this thing was going high, this one was going low, and when this is going low, this one's going high. So we got to see what's going on here at the very end. We see them both kind of going down. It could be because it's the, the rain burning off. Um, so we'll have to see, like you know, what happens now. It's actually sunny out here again. Get some clouds in the sky. Beautiful day. With the sun shining out here. A nice bright sky. So we'll see how that actually affects the signal here later today, and then we can probably tell it tonight what's going on there. And one thing to point out on this uh, week-long tilt meter. Um, now we're starting. We, we were losing our last collapse signals here off the left end of the graph because it's about a week long. It's been almost a week. You know, uh, yeah, it's been over a week now since the last collapse, huh? Yeah. So there it is, and so you can see the scale it shrink. It shrinks to fit the, the biggest spike on here. So right now the biggest spike is up here to around 35. So you see the top goes from 40 to minus five. You know, then you know by this time tomorrow it's going to be a lot, a lot shorter again once we get past these two spikes. And then basically what we're going to see is this thing's going to get zoomed in more and more. So we're going to see this wiggle down here on the right side. It's going to become more and more apparent. It's going to eventually look something more like the top top graph once all this mess over here gets off of the side, slides off the side, and we can zoom into that part over there. So when you guys see the signal changing and see these lines rising and falling more, like that's what's going on, right? And that's basically the tilt we know about. You know, there's a couple of interesting signals here on a vertical component, like there was that, that spike during the earthquake there. Actually, the earthquake was the earthquake was farther before that, actually. It was kind of back in here. So something followed the earthquake, some, some kind of wiggling and adjustment, but it came back to where it was before. Same thing, oops, let's go back and let me touch that. Same thing with the one below here. And same thing with the one up here, isn't that interesting little spike? So some kind of settling, we know the ground is moving up there. We talked about the fuzziness in the signal yesterday, maybe having to do with those blocks still loose over there. And the last thing I wanted to point out on, a, on, a, on this page, the deformation page, is you guys can kind of see looking at the summit plot. This is for the past year, we actually started off level. It's our first collapse, probably when it collapsed that, that inner part of the crater. Then it kind of slowed down a little bit. Then we started collapsing that outer part of the crater. Things started really sinking along those outer, outer cracks. And it slowed down a lot, lot more recently when the level was starting to decrease. And then it sped up a little bit more as the thing kind of emptied all the way. And now we're basically back to flat at the very end right there. So that's uh, that's the tilt report. And that basically, you know, uh, we don't really know a whole lot more from the signal than we did yesterday. We're kind of it's in the same kind of holding pattern and waiting to see what happens, you know, as far as more inflation, that kind of thing. Um, I see a question here about the the crack in 130. 130 130's cracks are still there. They're still steaming. The the temperature spike was actually a false alarm. You know, um, it was a false reading. Yep. It was a false reading. Yeah. Um, so um, there is there wasn't really any any significant change on the plates in 130. You know, there might have been some little changes happening there because of the earthquake, but nothing really major that's worth worrying about for anyone else out there. So that's basically it. Uh, Back to you, Ikeka. Oh, right when you put something in your mouth, as usual. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that's what you know. And still, there's a lot of lava entering the ocean. So that's that's our midday uh, update. And if anything should arise, I'll, we'll probably be doing uh, another um, update. But it's Philip's birthday. Yeah, you guys gonna... won't, you guys won't see me me again today. Yeah, so we're that's gonna have enough. him um, celebrate it with his family and his lovely two daughters. Cooking yeah. him a dinner right now. Get back to you guys tomorrow. Yeah. One other thing: the the fire uh, Mauna Loa is uh, um, uh, it rained there last night. They said it rained two inches there last night. So it's not all the way contained yet. Um, the last we heard, but that helped a lot. And there's a bunch of guys out there all working really, really hard. To I'll be posting it. a video on the fire, how how crazy it was, and I have a video coming in. So look for that. And uh, hello everybody. Again, go vote tomorrow. Aloha. And rock your vote. Stay and stick uh, and what are we gonna say, guys? Stay, Stay classy, Puna. Aloha.